We finished the Airbnb. Hey everyone, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren and 14 months ago, Neiman and I acquired this property and we have been hard at work creating it and transforming it into what it is now. In this video, we are gonna be doing a full house tour with flashbacks from what it started at and then showing you guys what it is looking like now. So if you don't know anything about our story, 14 months ago, we acquired this property to live in it and to also renovate the upstairs to create it into an Airbnb. We quickly found out that we did not like living in a renovation zone, so we ended up moving out. And long story short, we have transformed the inside, both top and bottom. So the first thing is the curb appeal. We started out with this house looking not so great on the outside. There was little to no landscaping. The roof was about 50 years old. The siding was very dated and destroyed. So we had a lot to do before we even got into the inside. So when we purchased the property back in April of 2022, we started by renovating the outside. So we got all new siding and we got a whole new roof, all new gutters. We had the, the windows painted. And then over time, the curb appeal became what it is now. It was a process, but we had a lot of fun doing it and we've learned a lot. And we also had some great crews to help us transform this house because we definitely could not have done it on our own. We went with this lighter green siding. It's kind of a gray green that we really love. And then again, with the white trim and the black accents. Right here is the door to the upstairs unit. So this is how people will access the upstairs Airbnb if that is the only spot that they are renting out. We'll show you that in a minute. That is definitely one of my prized possessions right now. I'm a little nervous renting it out to people, but that's the whole point of what we were doing. Next here in the backyard, we had a deck that was completely falling down. It was rotted. We actually went ahead and took the railing off completely for about a year before we ended up having a guy come out and completely take the whole thing down and then he was able to build us a brand new deck and we are absolutely loving it. This will be a space that our guests can sit out here and have their morning coffee. In the in the morning time it's very shaded and it's super nice and calming even in the summer. This isn't really a part of the tour but it is on the property. I'll mention it really quickly. This is a back house is what we call it and it was a former garage but in the upper level there's actually a whole nother area that is fitted to be an apartment. So that's going to be our next endeavor, our next large project that we are going to be continuing to work with a local construction company. Uh, when we were doing this renovation, we really tried to stick local. We didn't want to go big, huge construction companies. We wanted to support the small businesses as we are a small business. And so they are going to be helping us transform the inside of that as well. So if you're interested in all of the house and flipping content, definitely get subscribed down below because that is gonna be a transformation you do not wanna miss. We actually recently had our landscaping finished by another local company. They did an absolutely amazing job and they're also gonna be doing our lawn care because we aren't going to be coming over to this property as much anymore. But I just wanted to spice up the outside. So I went with some mulch and some hydrangeas and some hostas and I think it just really leveled up what the outside looked like. Also at one point in in our renovation uh, we had to do some repairs for our driveway and so we got some new concrete poured as well as our front step area where we needed to get some concrete poured and have those steps be rebuilt because it wasn't code the stairs were actually like this this wide and so it wouldn't even fit a person's foot so we did go ahead and get all of this over here 
redone. And we also had our same deck guy go ahead and build this front porch surround here uh, for safety reasons and also again to, uh, to level up the curb appeal. Let's head inside and you guys are going to be absolutely amazed at the transformation from the pink walls that it formerly was to now the more modernized look. This is our front porch patio. It is enclosed, so it's kind of like a three seasons room. Um, it, it doesn't have any HVAC in here. And I do wanna preface with saying that although this is a full house tour and everything is completely done, we are gonna be switching out and adding things and taking away things as far as furniture and things go. So I am still on the hunt for the perfect patio set out here for guests to be able to enjoy again, like their morning coffee or something like that. We're gonna go ahead inside. So as we enter the space, we were a little bit unsure of the layout because the layout is a little bit different than maybe like a typical more modern house. This house was built in 1905. So we had to work with what we had. We didn't wanna do any major demo on this level. And so what we did was we just worked with what we had. So when you walk in, we have our dining space right here. And as you can see in the before footage, there used to be pink walls pink blinds, literally everything was different. And the only thing that we had not, that we did not change is the carpet in here. Um, actually the people that we bought it from recently had updated the carpet. So we knew that that wasn't something that we needed to replace. Um, and then you step in here and we've got the living area. So the reason we decided to put the living area here is because it just was the most functional uh, so that you could see the TV directly over here with it being the entry. There's just really no great spot to put the couch to be able to watch the TV and things like that. So we decided to do it right here in this middle section, which I think technically is supposed to be the dining room just due to the light up above and its proximity to the kitchen but this works just as well and I really like just kind of like the more gathering area between the two spaces um, we've got our four person couch over here it could probably even fit five or six people right here where this wall is it used to be a door to the master bedroom. So we ended up having our contractors just completely wall that off because there's actually another door around the corner and it was just weird to us, the functionality of this second door. And you'll see that when we get into the room that it just makes a lot more sense without that door. Plus it's not an eyesore out here in the main living space and that gave us a nice big wall to put our couch in. And then we step in here. The kitchen, we we really didn't do too much of a change in here. The main thing we did is we got new laminate flooring and then we added some can lights and we painted. The cabinets were already updated so we got really lucky there. The countertops stayed the same and then we actually did get all new for stainless steel appliances. So we've got dishwasher, fridge, and then the stove and microwave are right over here. And then we've got it fully outfitted for our Airbnb guests. So we have dishes, we have a coffee maker, and we have all of the things that if you were living here or staying here for a while, you would have the appropriate amenities. So right off the kitchen here, we've got three doors. We've got our bathroom and our pantry right in here. That kind of goes along with the kitchen where there's a lot of storage in there. And then we've got our bedroom. So in here is the bathroom that's gonna be for the main level all around. And we did do just a little bit of updating. We continued the laminate flooring all the way into here. Um, we kept the same shower because it was actually um, fairly new and not really anything wrong with it. So there was really no reason to replace that. Saved a little cost there. We did replace the vanity completely and the mirror situation with the light, even a new toilet. And then in here, we've got our laundry room. Um, again, just really painted and updated the flooring in there. And then right across the hall here is the master or primary bedroom, really the only bedroom on this level. And so we've got a king bed in here to accommodate our guests. 
I know that when Neiman and I stay in Airbnbs, we always love a king bed. So we decided to go ahead and do that in here uh, because it was a great size for this room. It, this room is able to fit that. Got a dresser that I didn't flip because it was actually really nice and doesn't even need to be painted. Right over here where this mirror is, is on a step. And it's kind of a weird place for a step, but what it was, there was actually a door on this wall as well. And this door led up to the upstairs. So if you remember that outside door that I showed you when we were outside, this door would open right into that stairwell as well. And then you would be able to access the upstairs. Again, we just really didn't feel like it was necessary anymore to have. And then this is where the other door was right here. So again, like the nightstands would have covered the door. It was just a really weird and awkward situation, but we made do with what we had. And I decided to keep this step uh, because of the carpet situation. We didn't want to pull it up, uh, but it's a perfect spot for our full length mirror there. And it's not super awkward anymore. So that is this level of the house. Let's head upstairs to the loft area. So right on the right side of the front entrance, you can come up the stairs and then you'll enter this loft area. When Neiman and I were living here, this was actually our office space. There was blue carpet that was super stained. The walls were, I don't even remember what color, but it just basically wasn't appealing and the carpet needed to go. Luckily, underneath the carpet, we found this beautiful, beautiful hardwood floors that we had refinished and it looks just absolutely amazing now. So we've turned this space into a double bedroom with a little living space as well. So we found this couch off Facebook Marketplace. It actually does convert to a futon as well. And then our TV and entertainment center here. And then we've got space for four people to sleep here. Um, we've got the two nightstands in the middle there and then yeah they're just outfitted for sleeping arrangements we figure that the more people were able to sleep the more families and things like that that were able to accommodate we also got, went ahead and hung a little closet bar here because this closet is just shelving and so we wanted to be able to uh, accommodate for people who may have dresses or things that they need to hang up nicer clothes for on their trip to Omaha then this is where the fun begins. This is my tried and true biggest project I've ever taken on that I'm so excited is finished now. This door leads straight into the kitchen area of the second Airbnb. So like I said, we're gonna have options to where you can rent out this unit alone. And that is why we have this lock on here because then they won't be able to get into this side of the unit. And then if you wanna just rent out this side of the unit, that's okay. Or we'll also have an option for the whole entire house as a full unit that sleeps 10 people. So right here, walk into the kitchen area. Again, my tried and true, you guys, if you've been watching our videos, you saw the complete kitchen transformation and I'll link it above and we'll link the whole entire Airbnb playlist below. But this transformation is probably uh, one of my favorites in this space, just all of my visions coming to life. We got to save the backsplash here, which was my inspiration, honestly, for the entire unit. I was able to take this color tile and use it throughout the entire Airbnb, which was my plan all along. So I took this color and I put it on the cabinets. I created a DIY countertop for the kitchen because we were able to keep the sink and I kept the counters and went ahead and just did this all by myself. Painted the cabinets again with the hardwood flooring and then all of the rest is basically just um, cosmetic things like painting and then adding the different fixtures. And then as we walk in through here, this is the hallway area. So this is the door that actually leads down to the outside for the people to access this unit if they're renting it out alone. And then if you come over to the right, you will enter into the sunroom. So this is a great room um, because 
we actually added an AC unit. And so although you would think that a sunroom would be super hot because there's no HVAC out here, um, that AC and the fan really allows this room to be utilized in a way that before it really wasn't able to be used because it was either so hot in the summer or so cold in the winter. We also were able to add the blinds, which are the shades, which really um, help keep that sunlight out and helps it stay cool in here in the summer. And then we've got a pull-out couch here. So people will be able to utilize this as another sleeping arrangement to accommodate for more people. So this unit up here sleeps four and then we also have the option for an air mattress as well, where we would just have the um, guests move, move around the furniture a bit and then an air mattress could fit right here. Um, as we, oh, so this right here is where I added in the blue color from the tile backsplash in the kitchen into this room. So as you can see, it's gonna be in every single room. I also tied it in over with the decor as well. Just little hints of that is just what I really wanted to accomplish throughout this entire um, makeover. So as you come out of the sunroom, you come into the hallway area. I love the skylight. Our roofer tried to get us to take it out because they're just a pain in the butt, but I love the natural light and not very many houses have skylights anymore, I feel like. Um, so I was proud to keep that. And then again, here is another aspect of that color. We found this at Junk Stock. So this is handmade and we got it uh, locally. So that was a nice little touch as well as our uh, full length mirror here. This is a great touch for guests because that way they can see how they look. Who, who doesn't like to look at themselves in the mirror? As you come off of the hallway, we come into the bathroom. The bathroom was probably my most tricky, difficult project because as we got through the entire makeover, I just felt that I couldn't execute what I, my vision correctly or in a timely manner. Like I could have done all of this, but we decided to hire it out. And so we had our construction company come in and they did all of the tiling. They did all of the hanging of the fixtures. They did all of the painting. Basically most of the things in here is from our construction company. And they even took out this window that was right here. It was like this whole wall basically. And we just added a small window so that we can still get some daylight and some airflow in here. If you want to open that, you can, but we just figured that it was like a weird placement for the whole window to be here. So we walled that off. That was actually before we did the siding. We kind of planned that right so that the siding would just go ahead and cover up that old space that they had to do that construction with. You guys, so many people comment about what is happening back here in the corner of the bathroom. And honestly, it's just like a little cubby that I put this shelf and then there is like a small linen closet right here. It's above the stairs that bring you to the unit. So it's super small, not the most functional, um, but that's the big surprise about what's behind this little cubby area. Nothing too special. I promise you're not missing anything if you didn't see that before. So over here, the tile around actually goes around the entire room, this little strip of the tile color that I pulled from the kitchen yet again. And then I also color matched this with the kitchen cabinets. So this vanity is something that we found at an estate sale and I turned it into, well, it's like an end table that I turned into a vanity. Like I made the piping and everything work so that now this water can turn on and it actually is a functioning vanity. I had that in my mind because this space is just so small with the door 
we had to have like a perfect size and all of the things. So I was super pleased with how that also came out. In the end, my vision coming to life is just so fun. And then right out here is the bedroom to the left. This is like the primary suite in, or the primary bedroom in the upper unit. Um, so again, with my vision coming to life, I had this accent wall planned from the very beginning and I was able to execute it. And then as you can see, the color was, that was the color like for the pop of blue in this room, along with the little console table um, that is under the TV. And then I also flipped the nightstand. So in the bedroom, we've also got a portable AC because although there is central air in the entire house, the control is only downstairs and we wanted our guests to be able to regulate the temperatures in the upstairs as well. So we got these portable ACs for them. We installed the TV for people to watch TV. And then all of the decor kind of just happened um, it's, what's that word? Not organically? Yeah. And then all of the decor just kind of happened organically where we had previously bought some stuff for our own house and our own bedding, but I ended up switching it out pretty soon after that. And so it ended up working again with that blue color and the little pop of another accent color was just absolutely perfect. We have a birch bed, which one of our guests already stayed here. They felt like they were sleeping on a cloud. So shout out to birch for sending us that bed because our guests are going to be sleeping very comfortably here in our Airbnb. We've also got a, a closet here to where we've provided um, some hangers, a spot for your luggage, and then extra pillows for the pull-out couch, pillows and linens for the pull-out couch out there, and the air mattress that is available as well. And then last but not least is the behind the door little office nook as well as like slash vanity. We've got a mirror here, but then also plenty of space for someone to work or uh, do whatever you want when you're sitting at a desk. So that is the bedroom. And then last but not least, here is the official stairwell of how you get up into that top level Airbnb. Um, it was a pain in the booty to get the these stairs all sanded and then stained again but I did it and then I was able to add that really neat wallpaper on the back backer board of the stairs. I'm so so excited about how this turned out and just everything that we were able to accomplish in the past 14 months. We're done. We're done. With phase one. Phase one of the main house. I really think it was like <laughs> We did phase one and two at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because we kind of just planned to do the upper level and then we were like, oh, you know, we got these great contractors, let's do the lower level too. That's when we moved out and it was just for the best to move out. There's sure. no doubt about it. But this was like I said, like my passion project, I feel like upstairs especially, because on the lower level, we didn't really do any work besides like furnishing it and that type of thing. But like as far as construction wise, we did nothing downstairs. I will say that I'm super thankful to have Neiman to have helped me with some of the projects that we did upstairs because I couldn't have done it on my own or if I did do it on my own like it would have taken a lot longer than 14 months which was already longer than we wanted it to very, take very very um, but things like demo and like doing the flooring upstairs in the sunroom and I don't know there's just a, a several different things that he helped me with that I would have been very difficult for me to do on my own so i'm cutting this right here we're gonna go inside because there's mowing of course right when we start to record so let's get inside and continue <laughs> this <clears throat> well come to find out that was the mower or landscaper that we actually hired here so it's good <laughs> to know that he shows up and we don't have to like ask him where he's at or anything and he he works by his word so that's good yeah for sure. <laughs> So, what do you think this did for our relationship? How do you think that this was helpful in our relationship? Or what do you think that it did going through this process together? On the spot. On the spot? I mean, 
uh, through the whole thing, like as you guys know, we worked through some things, but I don't think it really had anything to do with this yeah. project. Um, I feel like it had to do more with like other things, yeah, just the our project. Mm -hmm. But I think that once we got through those things, that this really helped our relationship. And then even when we like weren't technically dating together, like we still worked together here at the house. And um, I think that it taught you especially like more patience. Um, I asked for you, not me. I'll go through what I think. You took my answer. Now I don't know what to say. Uh, <laughs> I think that we just learned a lot. Like it's my thing to be doing the things and then your thing to like be behind the camera. Yeah. Honestly. Like That's a good I point. know you don't want to do something like to the extent of what we did. We like did upstairs ever again. Mm -hmm. But if it were up to me, I would totally do maybe not hundred percent to the extent but mm -hmm. like I still want to have my hands on the projects yeah I'm an ideas and like a thought like I'll bring the thoughts the ideas the creativity to it but I don't want to get my hands dirty necessarily yeah. that's one thing you I will think, if I ask you to oh for sure oh for sure but I need balance too like I can't do it every day uh, I think that's one thing I learned as well what I think that's a good point that you make about me as an individual, but within this relationship dynamic as well, is it's okay to not want to like do everything and to like honor that boundary of, I don't enjoy this. Cause I had those conversations like a lot with her. Like, I don't want to be doing the physical labor, especially because we work hard in other areas to where we've built a level of resources where we can have people that are do this as their specialty doing it. That was always something that I, throughout the process, struggled with. But then as soon as I started to communicate that with Lauren, I learned communication as well through yeah. this too. And I think like for me, once you kept telling me, because there were also some things that I felt I was pushing off because I knew how much work it was going to be, but I had in my brain that I was gonna be doing all of the work like we were gonna refinish the floors ourselves. Huh. We were gonna tile ourselves. We were gonna literally all of it. And then when I started becoming overwhelmed, I mean, I'm good at putting timelines on myself and then not really being realistic about them. And so when I started doing that and then like those timelines kept coming and kind of failing, I was like, you know, I think it might be okay for me to not do this myself. So I'm gonna let go. I have a hard time, I'm a control person. So I'm like, I'm gonna let go of this project and I'm gonna let go of this project. And in order for these things to get done in a timely manner, I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna let someone else who does this do it in a week or two versus me taking months, 14 months. to do something. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm saying it would have taken longer than 14 months. Like For we sure. would, I would still be tiling that bathroom. Yeah, heck yeah. And we, uh, refinishing that floor just sounded awful, as you said. That cause yeah. Watching those guys with that, I had to help the guy lift the heavy freaking machine upstairs too. Yeah. So going forward, let's talk about the future a little bit. Um, for the time being, our plan with this property, now that we've spent money and we've invested, now it's the fun part and it's time to start earning some money. So yeah. we had the goal this year after we realized that we weren't gonna get it done last year when we bought it, um, to have it rented out for big events that are coming to the Omaha area. And we were able to achieve that. So yeah. that's nice, high five there. So last year when we acquired this um, property in April, he was a little bit ambitious in thinking that we would be able to have this, that space particularly ready by July. That was like three months yeah. or June, June really. June. So two months, mid June, two months. And it, you guys saw what it looked like before. Like that was absolutely ludicrous <laughs> that you would ever even think that that was possible All because right. June coming to Omaha, a lot of people come to Omaha for the College World Series baseball tournament that happens here for the last two weeks in June every single year. Brings a ton of people and so obviously we want to maximize on that and so we were able to do that a whole year later and we're ready now with not only just one unit but two units 
and we've got some people that are going to be running it out the entire unit um, for the first couple of days of the college world series so we're super excited they're going to be our first guests that we don't know and they got the whole house as well yeah. so it'll be a really good case study for what improvements we need what just the overall did we do our job and and is it going to be uh, what it needs to be to yeah. keep this thing booked and continuing to earn us income yeah but if any of you guys are interested in coming to the Omaha area and it's you live <laughs> need a place to stay we'll yes. link our links to the Airbnb website and there will be three links for all three of the spaces that you can get if you've got a large group we can accommodate that if you've got just small we can accommodate that and if you've got like a medium group we can accommodate that yeah it's very conveniently accessed it's like 10 minutes from, we i'm not gonna we're not, we don't need to sell them it'll no, sell itself yeah. once you guys see the photos yeah. uh so after the cws we're then going to reevaluate our plan do we want to focus on airbnb do we want to focus on furnish finder do we want to do all of it so it's we're gonna still maintain that short-term rental are we ever going to get like a year or two year leases in here? It's hard to say at yeah. this point. At this point, I think we've kind of talked about no. Yeah. Because we know the potential that this place could have. The longer it stays on Airbnb, the longer we get more, re or the more reviews that we get. Like right now we're sitting at one review for the one unit. So the more reviews we get, like the more other people be like, oh, okay, you know, these people had a good time, these people had a good time, but right now we're building up that reputation, so we're kind of starting from ground zero. Yeah. And um, but furnished finders, if you didn't know, that's like a place where nurses, travel nurses, and, like travel nurses, and different people, I think, can go on there. Whoever needs like a longer term stay, maybe than like a week or something then they could go on there and rent it for a long term like 30 days two months three months even and yeah. so that's another way that we are still generating that income not locking in a year lease but still accommodating people yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i think one of the biggest things we want you guys to know because we are out we're about we live 15 minutes away from here mm -hmm. and what we plan for was to get this property renovated and not have to worry about we wanted to create another stream of income but a passive stream of yeah. income and our plan there to be able to achieve that is we hired a local property management company who has experience in the airbnb game marin and tara with the gert life yeah, the Gert Life. We'll tag their social media down below. So if you're in the area, you have properties. Um, they're two amazing human beings. They're sisters. They live right down the street, but they're going to be managing this property for us. So they're going to, they brought their cleaning team in, they have their handyman, and they have all of the experience and knowledge that they have from doing this for, I don't know, I actually don't know how many years, but quite a while. Several years. They have several other properties that they manage as well. So All kind of centrally yeah, focused here in the area as well. So they're going to be managing the property. So we have like the checkout window, as you guys are probably accustomed to with hotels and everything, from 11 to 3. All their team, the communications with the customers, the Airbnb platform, all of that will be uh, facilitate, or they'll be. It'll be their responsibility yeah, to take like care our of that. Hosts, yeah. Yep. So that's what. That's the way that we're going to achieve the passivity that we're looking for, so that we can get back to flipping furniture and maybe even get into the next property. Yeah, but like we said at the beginning of this video, when I was doing the tour, we do have that back house, and that's kind of our next project. I think that we're gonna start yeah right yeah we've we talked with tara yesterday and we've got a plan for what needs to happen first in there but we can't let you know that because you're gonna have to get subscribed because we'll put that out in another video here in the short future but yeah that's it we're done i we can't did it. believe i like I'm shell shocked. Again, I am a control person, and so me allowing people, especially up in that upper area that I don't know, is like, oh, it's coming, and it's coming tomorrow. So I'm letting go. This is the whole point of what we were doing, and I'm just hoping that people will just be respectful and as much as we can hope to just have some awesome guests and just. 
I hope some of you guys come and visit as well and to see, you know, if you've been watching the entire um, series up until this point, like you've seen firsthand in real time how long and all of the work that we put into this project. And so we would love for you guys to come and check it out. Most definitely. And let's all just give Lauren a round of applause because she's the one that designed the just the theme she carried out so much of the work she kept us on it so i am proud of you and <laughs> i am inspired by her because her tenacity to push through hard stuff just be a trooper um, and a go-getter and a trailblazer so i love you and congratulations on bringing this to life and doing everything that you've done for it and for me thank you you're welcome i love you too so, that's all we got for you guys today. We hope you enjoyed that. Damn, we're done. We're done. I'm kind of like, I'm saying like, what do we do now? Even though I know we have a lot that we want to do and are going to do, but at the same time, it's just like, this has been what we've been mostly focused on for the past, especially now for the past like two months. Like, yeah. We've been hitting it hard. Well, that's the end of this video. All right, thanks so much for watching. We'll, we'll see, see you on the, the flip, flip side. side.